today on Divorce Court. Cancer can be a very difficult diagnosis, and not just for the person who has it, but to the entire family as well. It is an emotional bombshell that has ripples throughout everyone who knows them. In fact, in marriages in which one partner has been diagnosed with cancer, one out of five fail. Today on Divorce Court, we have a couple dealing with this very issue. Divorce Court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Tawanda Cunningham and Quincy Johnson. Been together for 13 years, engaged for six, and, and coming here trying to decide whether or not they should wow. marry. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're what doing today. Sure? <laughs> so we have gotten... I, I had them take my compatibility test, which we will discuss later on. I also have a copy of their marriage license, which I have permission to tear up should I think the union is ill-advised. Ms. Cunningham, I'm going to start with you. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your relationship and why you're not so sure after all these years whether or not you should jump the broom? Well, sometimes I question the loyalty between me and Quincy. Why is that? After we first moved in together, we was both working at a job, same chicken joint together. He, I was working day shift, he was working night shift. And um, got into an altercation with a girl, a co-worker there, because I heard some rumors that they were, I don't know, maybe sleeping together or whatnot. So I approached her, asked her, you know, about her and Quincy. She denied any, you know, she was messing with Quincy, told me to ask Quincy about it. So me and her got into this physical altercation or argument and, you know, still, I questioned his loyalty about it because I later on found out that he was taking her home. You know, at nighttime mm -hmm. when I didn't know about it. Was something going on, Mr. Johnson? <laughs> no, ma'am. Nothing going no, on at all. She had it all wrong. I carpooled. I take everybody home, and for, especially for some money. Does I he, take does, you does home. Does he carpool? <laughs> well, <laughs> as someone, I found out that he was carpooling, but a lot of nights he was carpooling just her. A few nights, but not, not... But not on the regular? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Not on the regular. What other reasons make you feel like he doesn't put you first? Another thing is that... This past New Year's, we went out together, um, and he had a friend of his come out also with us. Mm -hmm. My thing is that he is putting me in positions with his friends, knowing that they doesn't like me, putting me in uncomfortable situations for him to make remarks about our relationship. So I'm in the club with him, and he's over with Quincy talking about other girls in the club that's checking Quincy out mm -hmm. while I'm in the club with mm -hmm. them. Did you bring a guy that you know doesn't like your woman out to the club with you and your woman? I know, ma'am. I, I feel that she already had a... always had a problem with him. You mm -hmm. know, he was just a, a going-out friend. And, and this is my know, clear example of no loyalty. Right. Yeah, but, you know, but, 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 but... Mr. Johnson, let's say there was a chick that you could not stand. Uh-huh. And you guys were going out, and she brings this chick along. Wouldn't you feel like, like, why would you bring her? You're ruining my night. Right, but it's New Year's. It ain't like it's her birthday, my birthday. You know what I mean? It's New Year's. Well, we you just brought it to my birthday also. If you right. don't like somebody on your birthday, you still don't like them on New Year's. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes, ma'am. But anyway, go ahead. Okay, I mean, he, she overheard him say something like that. Um, it's nothing. I, no, brush it off. You know, I'm checking out you only, you know? And um, it's really no one I ever want to be with. I'm, I'm near with you. I'm just having fun. So it's, what's your you know? problem? I know, what, 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 right. Why don't you be cool? You, right. th you say that she tries to control too much of what you do and got you on a short lease. Yes, ma'am. Give me a couple of examples of that. I, I recently, like, say if I go out, or I want to go out, oh, man, it's always something, you know. I let her go out with her friends, and, and <laughs> I, I don't. <laughs> yeah, I let her go out with her friends, and I don't hear nothing. But when I want to go out, and maybe sometimes I go out in the wrong times. I, I, I'm, I go out, I'm a night owl, and I go out uh, to outer air spots, mm -hmm. so it ain't, you don't really mm -hmm. get there Just imagine him getting dressed mm -hmm. at 2 in the morning two, to go out. Well, what two. does she do when, when you go out or do something that she doesn't like? Uh, well, attitude. Attitude. Give me uh, an example. Yeah, she breaking things, uh, our end table, uh, center table, she throwing things. Um, Your Honor, we have really less of 
no money, so we can't afford to be breaking things and going to replace things. So you know, Mrs. Gunning, Ms. Gunningham, are you tearing up the furniture when yeah. you get upset? I believe that he don't did enough damage to my heart that he don't got no more. He don't got yeah. no. He don't got no room left. Okay, okay. So when you mess with me instead of me just taking it out physically to him, I try to put my energy towards something else. Can I'm, I say something? <laughs> can, can, can I say something? Emotions over here, money over here. If you're upset and you need to blow off some steam, run around the block. But don't <laughs> tear up your stuff. Right. That's paying the stupid tax. It's mm -hmm. the tax on stupid behavior. It will keep you broke. Right. So just, you know, run around the block, find something else right. to do, but don't tear up the furniture. What did she do to your boss? Oh, well, okay. She don't feel that I, I stand up for myself all the way or out and going or don't want to fight everybody, you know. So um, I just started at that time. Uh, I was working and uh, it, I wasn't on payroll yet. So we had to jot down my hours. When it got time for payday, he was short. And uh, instead of me, she wanted me to, I guess, the. Um, Give Start it to him, stuff. right? Yeah, yeah, you know, but he my boss, and you know, I just already quit my other job for this job. So she called him, went crazy on him. <laughs> the next day, he was like, "Why you don't let your wife talk to me like that?" <laughs> you know, did you lose your job? Did he pay I, I you? Did he, he pay me? Yeah, he paid me. You right? I mean, he paid me, but you know, I could have lost my job yeah. then. You know, <laughs> you seem to be a bit of a hothead. You can't seem to control yourself. But let me tell you, you end up making a lot of problems that you can't resolve. He could have very well lost his job when you came up all cranky at his boss. Well, he did not tell it, you. Wait, wait, wait. All I'm trying to tell you is you can respond to negative circumstance with something other than crazy. You can actually <laughs> respond intellectually and still get the same thing without risking, you know, broken furniture and a dude that could lose his job. All right, throw what my do you need to say, Mrs. Cunningham? With the job thing, calling his boss, the man, we have been knowing him for years. You know what I'm saying? We have been knowing him. And he might want to call it crazy, what I call him. Then his boss may want to say I talk to him a certain kind of way. But I felt like he knew that Quincy was getting paid under the table, and he did it on purpose. And he thought that Quincy, knowing Quincy's character and been knowing us for years, he knew Quincy would overlook it. Mm -hmm. But I'm a mom. I have kids. We have things to take care of in my household. You're not going to scamp him out like that when he be, he does so much for this guy. I, I got you. I got you. You I, know, I, I, so I, I, I feel I, I'm like... I'm hearing you. It, it makes a little sense. Mm -hmm. Not quite enough, but a little. <laughs> I understand, though, on a more serious side, that you've had some significant health problems. Yeah. And that you don't feel that he's been supportive. So I do want to turn the tables and talk about that a little while. When me and Quincy moved in together, it was like I was the main source of like the responsibility went to in the house. Like I did everything. Right. Like and so once I got sick, I could count on my hands and feet maybe how many times he had been to the hospital with me in six years. Now, Mr. Johnson, were you less than there for when she really needed you? Ms. Cunningham, tell me about your illness and why you feel Mr. Johnson wasn't supportive during the course of that? Well, I got diagnosed with a very rare, uncurable cancer in 2011. Do you know the name, the name it's of It's called gray zone lymphoma. It's a combination uh -huh. of Hodgkin and non Hodgkin lymphoma. Oh, OK, OK. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, I mean, when I'm with me and Quincy moved in together, it was like I was the main source of like the responsibility went to in the house. Like I did everything. Right. Like, and so once I got sick, the role switched. You yeah. know, so now he had to be responsible for things that he normally wasn't responsible for. And it seemed like he took a, took a toll on him to take care of the home and to be a partner to me also, like to be supportive to me while I was in the hospital, mm -hmm. while I was going through certain things. So, I mean, I could count on my hands and feet maybe how many times he had been to the hospital with me in six years. How often have, do you go in the hospital periodically? Well, do you have long stays? Well, now I am, I've been in remission now for about two and a half years now. Yes. So. Yes. So I I'm so happy for that. Place. I understand you had a bone marrow transplant. Yeah. It, which is not an easy thing. No, it's they not. They have to kill everything, every... I was basically everything. born again. Yeah, yeah. Now, Mr. Johnson, were you less than there for when she really needed you? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. I, I, my granddaddy had passed from cancer, so... Um, I was scared. I was young when we first met. I mean, first knew that she had cancer. I'm really not a hospital person. I, I say that, but I was there, and I got small kids. You know that that don't really show you how they um, going on with it, and I'm going on with it. So I, I had to stay there for the home. 
I had to take my kids to work with me. I had to go to football practice. I had to get them ready for school. And when I, when I come home at night, it's just, it's just me when I live in the living room. You know, I used to break down, you know? I never want to lose her and not feel that she, I'm Miss, not there for her. I, and, you know, and I not, got you, Mr. Johnson, and I understand that you were under a lot of pressure, uh -huh. but this is the time to, to, to circle the wagons. You get family and friends to assist you on that end, because uh -huh. she's in there looking but, like, I might die yeah, right, this month. Right. And I know and and I need that man right. holding my hand because yes. I might die right, right now. See well, what I'm you know, saying? the kids can't come in there. So who's going to... I, well, I really, really have a little... You kids. have no family, you know, nobody I mean, we got to help family, you. We got family, but little to no help on the babysitting side. So I, you makes know, a lot of then, excuses. Yeah, I, I, and that's my problem You can with find him. a way. When somebody knows that, that somebody's got cancer, you can, you've got to be able to find a way to get there. Well, we did, and um, we... Um, no, we you watched. didn't. She just said you did. No, Because no. it seemed like he could find ways to go do other things that did pertain to coming to spend a night at the hospital. Such as? Such as maybe if he wanted to step out with his friends. He could, his, at that time, his mom was able to watch the kids, or he could drop the kids off down there. But if I asked you to come to spend a night at the hospital with me, Oh, I don't have nobody to do this. Can't nobody do that. I mean, it seemed like it was more or less of him finding... Picking and choosing. Exactly. I, I could find somebody to take care of the kids exactly. if I needed to do something, but not to, in order to do something that's, for her. Yeah, now, that's, that's not, 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 hang on. Now, Mr. Johnson, I ain't mad. And I understand what happened to you, but did you hear what she said and what I said? We're not saying you're a bad person, but we're saying this needed to be different because she may have to fight that fight again. Right. And if she does have to fight that fight again, you need to show up in a manner that she'll, she'll feel supported. That's all we're trying to get across to you. <laughs> See what I'm saying? We're just asking you to up your game and telling you how to get it done. Okay, I will. We both work. I, I work in the mornings. He worked at night. I shouldn't have to get up at five, six, four o'clock in the morning, go to work and come home to a nasty house or have to come home and wash the dishes, clean the kitchen, cook dinner, get the kids to bed. I got you. Mr. Johnson, did you hear? I had to stop myself for a minute. I forgot we were on before your vows. So let me ask you. You've been together so long, you obviously love the living daylights out of one another. If I could wave my gavel and give you one thing that he could fix, change, or do better, and you gotta be specific, don't just say more supportive or something, what would it be? Security. And in what way can he deliver security? It's like, for example, I'm, we both work. I, I work in the mornings, he work at night. If I, I, shouldn't have to get, I shouldn't have to get up at five, six, four o'clock in the morning go to work and come home to a nasty house or to, you know, having to come home and wash the dishes, clean the kitchen, cook dinner, get the kids to bed. I mean, you could at least take out some meat, have dinner started for me. I mean, try to make ways to make my life easier. I, I, I got you. Mr. Johnson, did you hear? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, it's like, I love this woman. Mm -hmm. She's been working all day. What can I do to move the ball along so she doesn't have to come home and start another right, job right, all together. Right. Are you with me, Mr. Johnson? Yes. I mean, you, I'm, I'm a night owl. I'm a night owl. I, I might, when I get off of night work, I want to chill. And it is 4, 5 o'clock in the morning, quickly, when you're getting off at 12. And, and I play the game. Yeah. And, see, see, and that what she wants is for you not to chill and play the game right. first, but to take care of your responsibilities right. first. Right. That's what she wants. Right. Right. And she wants you to, of your own volition, uh -huh. handle something that she's always handling. Yes. Like, you shouldn't have to be told to clean the cut. Come in, look around, see, see what needs to get done, and, and do, it. do it. Yes. With me? Yes. All right. So I did have you fill out the compatibility test. And, you know, nothing jumped out at me that was really weird or really odd. Both of you were fully able to, uh, to list the, the faults and problems of the other, but you only had a couple of faults and problems with yourself. So maybe a little more introspection might be called for. But at this juncture, we've talked about a lot of negative things, but you guys have been together for a very long time. So I want you to tell me, Mrs. Cunningham, give me 30 seconds of why Mr. Johnson is the man for you. No negativity, no what if, no but. If he could just tell him why he's the love of your life, whom you would consider marrying. Because he's my best friend. I mean, we laugh together, we have the same hobbies, we, I mean, we, um... I mean, we, we could say, my God, I found myself finishing his sentences, we think alike, I mean, I could find nobody more perfect 
this half of me. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, he's wonderful. He's very sweet. He can be loving it. He can be very affectionate, a hard worker, a great father. I mean, so many things I could say that's so 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 great about you. But you know, Ain't no Beautiful. But. A, Ain't a, no but. I'm a stopping plus. right there. A plus right there. You go, okay, right Mr. There. Johnson, the bar has set, been set pretty high. Yes. Uh, 30 seconds. 30 give, seconds. Me the, give me your best shot. You my soulmate. You my everything. I couldn't really imagine my life without you, you know? Uh, even when you was going through the thing, of this losing you was this cr driving me crazy. Music helped me a lot, mm -hmm. you know? Um, you always there for me. You got my back when, when I feel like I have no family at all, and she always the only family I can count on. Um, she a great mom, uh, and that, that's that's everything to me because I had a mom who was raised by only a mom. Mm. So this to see that this makes me want to be more close and more, you know, to you. And I'm, I'm sorry if I if I don't do things the way you want me to, but I, my, my best interest is yours, you know? Well, y'all killed it. <laughs> y'all just killed it. <laughs> you made my day with that. You made her day with that. That was wonderful. That was wonderful on both your parts. I like you. I mean, I really do. I thought I was gonna be mad at you, was a little hot at you <laughs> in the beginning. You got all the makings to make it right, but you just gotta tighten this up over here and tuck this in over there and smooth this out around the corners. Mrs. Cunningham, let me say this to you. You guys cannot afford any more temper tantrums. You just can't afford it. You have to be mature enough to be met with negative information, the consequences of circumstances, and not tear stuff up. You just do. Not only are you costing yourself money, you're teaching your children how to feel. Mm -hmm. Your children will read the script you write for them. And the script you're writing right now is, little Johnny, if you don't get what you want, <laughs> cause some chaos. Yeah. Johnny going to jail. <laughs> you don't want Johnny to go to jail. Yes, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> so remember, whenever you're conducting business at home, that's writing the script for your children to follow and you're teaching them how to feel. Teach them how to stay out of jail. Okay. Okay? Mr. Johnson, remember, always ask before you ever sit and chill and cool and calm or game, have I done something to demonstrate I'm an active member of this family? Always! And do one thing before you do it. Do you understand? And it's not just, okay, well, I worked today. She's worked today, see, yeah, too. That's, see, that's my problem. I, I, I worked, yeah, you know. She man. worked today, too, and yeah. then she comes home and right. cooks and cleans and does the kids part. Right. That ain't right. Right. You know what I mean? I work today, and now let me look at all the things that she's gonna do, what she needs to do when she gets home. Let me take half of them off her plate, because I'm that dude. Yes, ma'am. That's who I want you to be for her. Yes, ma'am. So, Take this marriage certificate, hold hands, walk down that aisle, love one another, do the right thing, and good luck to you. This All matter right. is adjourned. The best advice I got from Judge was to listen and be there for a little more, even when it seemed like I am, this, it's not enough for her. So just to help out and just be more there for her. What Judge Lynn Toller really taught me was to change my attitude, be a little more patient, be a little more understanding of other people's situations, and not to be so a hothead. So I would try to work on that and see how far we can make it in this relationship.